Hi guys, welcome to Utah. My name is Kurt Williams. I'm on the board of directors for the Land Cruiser Heritage Museum in Salt Lake City. And I've been very fortunate to be asked by Toyota to come out here and spend some time in the all new 2024 Land Cruiser. We're gonna answer some questions that you, the viewer, have asked and spend some time seeing how this stacks up against the heritage of what we've come to know about all previous models. Before we go any further, I do wanna point out Toyota hasn't released all of the features and specs of this new model just quite yet. Some of those we're gonna to need to wait till it's a little closer to sell time. I'd love to speculate and say that we're gonna see a trail hunter package or maybe a winch or 40 inch tires, but I'd purely be guessing at this point. So let's see how this thing stacks up against the legendary Land Cruisers of old and get out and go see it on the trail. Now before we get started, we have to talk about what a cool looking model this is. When the Land Cruiser first debuted in 1951 as the BJ series, it was unmistakably an off-road inspired vehicle with very rugged looks. Kind of lost some of that into the 90s and certainly with the introduction of the 100 series, they started to get a little more rounded looks and a lot more luxury inspired. Well that's changed with this new model and I appreciate how it is a throwback to the heritage look of the older Land Cruisers. This is the first edition grade, which comes with the round heritage LED headlights, the roof rack, the rock rails. It features exclusive interior designs and some really cool touches that will be limited to the first edition model. It's boxy, it's aggressive, and it looks exactly how an off-road inspired model should look in my opinion. But enough pining about it, let's get to some of those questions. I know there's been a lot of discussion about the four cylinder motor, but it's not that far off from the horsepower of the 200 series and it does have significantly more torque. It makes 326 horsepower and 465 pound feet of torque, which is quite incredible for a four cylinder motor and more than enough power for on and off road fun. Yes, absolutely yes. Reliability is what Toyota is known for, and it should come at no surprise that Toyota spent several years on R&D perfecting this technology and making sure it lasts as long as the models of old. Toyota is synonymous with hybrid tech, and they've been a leader in the segment for well over 20 years. They have proven that hybrid technology and hybrid batteries will survive the life of the vehicle. Now there is a third row version being sold, but unfortunately not in North America yet. You'll note that there are cup holders and USB-C ports in the back where a third row would be, so I have to imagine there could be one in the future if the market demands it. I'm personally very happy that Toyota went back to their roots with this model, and Toyota's reasoning was to focus on the off-road capabilities that everybody came to love about the older models. They made it smaller overall to better fit on trails and loaded it with some amazing off-road tech and features that really help it perform off-road. All this while lowering the price significantly. Now we don't have official numbers yet, but Toyota has said it's gonna come in somewhere in the mid 50s, which is approximately 30,000 less than the outgoing model. Now as much as I love driving this thing on the road, we need to take it where it's really meant to be. The stabilizer disconnect mechanism is new for this model and it really offers added flex and suspension travel all at the push of a button. And this really helps keep the tires on the ground. So combine this with the multi-link rear suspension and we've got a very capable off-road machine. We don't really need a lot of things, but some of them are awesome. And the multi-terrain monitor system is one of them. The multi-terrain monitor lets you view where you may otherwise need a spotter offering views from the side and in front, as well as a moving grid line that shows you your steering inputs. There are a lot of ways to calculate ground clearance, and there is no industry standard. It could be from the bottom of the differential, or maybe the lowest suspension point. But what I do know is this model will be just as capable out of the box as the other models it competes against. Don't let an often game spec on paper sway your opinion. We know the Toyota engineers wouldn't put the Land Cruiser name on it if it wasn't up to the task. Speaking of ground clearance, no, the hybrid battery doesn't affect this at all. It's actually located up in the body above the frame, keeping it out of the way of trail damage, and it doesn't limit the ability to install a lift kit in the future.
There is more than one type of hybrid, and the Land Cruiser, like the Tundra and the all-new Tacoma, are performance hybrids designed to work hard. This system integrates an electric motor in between the internal combustion engine and the traditional 8-speed automatic transmission. This isn't quite like your standard Prius. So both motors distribute power simultaneously into one system, and that power is then distributed to each wheel as needed, depending on which drive mode you're in, just like a traditional four-wheel drive system. That's what makes this vehicle so appealing. You get all that power, tons of low-end torque, all with less fuel consumption. Yes, crawl control is standard on the Land Cruiser, and it's awesome. It helps you maintain speed on a downhill section or navigate your way through technical rocks. But what it's really cool for is helping you get unstuck. I've got this one buried in some sand. Let's see what it can do. Number one, it has significantly more torque than some of its competitors. That hybrid system offers tremendous low-end torque. Number two, it can tow 6,000 pounds, which is 2,500 pounds more than some of its competitors. And number three, which is a major factor in this decision, is reliability. Toyota is and always has been miles ahead of the competition when it comes to dependability, quality, and durability. And I am confident that this will be true for this new 2024 Land Cruiser. This new Land Cruiser features a full-time four-wheel drive transfer case with a center locking diff, but my personal favorite feature is the push-button electric locking rear differential that splits that power to those rear tires equally when you're in technical off-road terrain. That rear locking differential hasn't been available on a US model Land Cruiser since the 90s, so I'm very excited about that. Before we wrap things up, I just have to point out some of the cool new features this new model has. First off, the color selectable rigid fog lamps. Next is the available console cool box, which keeps your drinks cold in that desert heat. The soft touch surfaces for your knees and palm rest for using the touch screen are nice. The push button access for the rear window opening is super handy. And one of my favorite tech features, the 120 volt, 2400 watt power inverter in the trunk, which can power all sorts of tools or camping accessories that need that big power. Well, there you have it. I'm sure there's a ton of questions we weren't able to answer just quite yet, but keep an eye on my socials and I'll share when I can. Also, keep an eye on autoguide.com. They'll be doing a full review. I wanna thank autoguide.com and Toyota for giving me the chance to come out here and spend time with the new Land Cruiser. And don't forget to like and subscribe.